Hi, Dennis Weiss. Welcome to Our Town. We're at the old Astor Bank location. We're being hosted by the Community Foundation in Dickinson County, so thank you very much, Elizabeth. We're here to talk about a topic. I figured there was only one guy in the world that would return my call and take this topic, <laughs> and that's you, Sheriff Gareth Hoffman. Thank you for coming. Absolutely. Thank you. Gosh, anybody that's alive and has one of these devices that they're watching us on right now, whether it's a phone or a tablet or a laptop or a television, some people still use those, you know, right? Um, has seen what we need, what we're going to talk about today. And that mm -hmm. is, I ask you to come here and sit down with me and talk about the state of policing in America and the state of policing in our little piece of America. And that's a wide-ranging topic right now today. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, this is a tough, a little bit of a tough topic for me. I, you and I have talked numerous times. Right. And um, it's not often that I get lost for words. Yeah. Uh, but this, this one's going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Um, it's just so... I think there's so many layers to it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so much going on that it's quite frankly hard to it's hard to process it's mm -hmm. hard to kind of kind of peel back those layers and see you know see where it is that we really need to go and where we are i would agree and conversely um there aren't too many people that i would have consented to sit down and have this conversation with just so right. you know right thank you um, uh, the the reality of it is i, I i've always give what I think because I this is this show has always been a conversation right conversation both people get to talk right kind of the problem we're having today right, right? so but both people get to talk I think this thing uh, in America and all everything that's happened around it has really revealed to us the challenge of mankind and it is mankind and authority right all arguments my statement all arguments are a question of who's in authority and whose rules we follow. Right. Well, you know my answer. That guy's in charge and Absolutely. it's his rules we follow. So. Absolutely. But we live in a world where lots of opinions and lots of wit there. But this highlighted man's problems with authority and authority's problem with itself. Right. Yeah. So a couple, a couple of thoughts, I guess, on my end. And I, I guess I'll pref, preface it with, first and foremost, who I feel the most saddened for, right, wrong, or otherwise, mm -hmm. is our military people. Mm -hmm. um, and here's why. I have a tendency to kind of maybe break things down to, okay. to the very, um, you know, earliest state. But I can't imagine being a military man or woman who has served this country, who has fought, whether locally or abroad, and given their lives, sacrificed their families. I would have to think that some of those people who are doing that for this country would find this very disheartening yeah. that what they've given and this is what this is where we have ended up mm -hmm. and this is what we are doing to ourselves yeah. we are currently being um, our own worst enemy mm -hmm. in a way and I've, it's it's very disheartening yeah. uh, I'm with you and the one man that's in charge I wholeheartedly agree and I struggle with the fact that that doesn't get talked about more. No, not much. Um, it's kind of, it's almost like in certain arenas, um, that's kind of a voodoo topic. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's sad. It is. I think that's part of the problem. If you lose faith, and you start to lose humanity, mm -hmm. you start to lose compassion, mm -hmm. this is where we end up. Agreed. And we saw that on videotape. Absolutely. Clearly. Did we not, you and Absolutely. I? Absolutely. In, in full disclosure, lots of people know, lots of people don't. Uh, I have worked with your department 
and the prior sheriff's department now mm -hmm. for 21 years mm -hmm. as a reserve deputy. Mm -hmm. um, but primarily I'm just citizen, right? right? So, but the reality of it is, is we're talking about us. Right. You and I today are talking about us, the right. state of policing in America, because of our common viewpoint. And then we're looking out into the, what effect it is on the citizenry. I doubt, Gareth, that there are many people who are going to watch this show, whether it's on TV or the internet, and we'll make it available so it can go anywhere anybody wants mm -hmm. to push it. We edit nothing in this show. If you don't right. want to say it, don't say it. If right. you do, say it. Right. And, and that's the way it's always been on this right. show. But I doubt very many people have ever stood in the shoes of being responsible, having the authority, and being responsible for an outcome in a confrontational situation right and felt that responsibility that's mm -hmm. watching this show right I had a young man in my home not too long ago I like him a lot great guy young guy grew up in from New Jersey and he was educating me on what this old hicks from the country don't know right right and uh, and he knows my history, knows where I've been, knows what I've done, and he has the best of intentions. Right. So there's nothing wrong with this conversation except the level of understanding between us because of the shoes I've walked in and the shoes right. he is not. Right. And he has a lot of law enforcement in his family, mm -hmm. in wider circle, but there's a difference between knowing how law enforcement is or should be and being. Right. There, I believe. Absolutely. Your opinion. Yeah, yeah. It's um, it's not what it seems. Obviously, it's not clearly. It's not what you see on TV. Mm -hmm. uh, it's you hit on it, and I and I agree with you. I think one of the things that definitely gets overlooked is that bur that burden you know there is there is a burden that you that you carry when you when you take on you know that kind of responsibility um, and I'll, I'll kind of segue that into a, a little bit of an off spin maybe with it, you and I talked about it I think you know when the the push for concealed carry and stuff mm -hmm. came out about okay. um, you know people people want to carry guns so be it not you know not against that but, it, but you often find yourself wondering, have they really thought about the responsibility mm -hmm. and the burden, you know, the emotional burden that can come with that? And are you pre truly prepared as a human being to utilize that in the appropriate setting, um, in the appropriate way, like that? Yeah. And... Um, it's not an excuse for poor behavior, no. um, but it, it is a reality of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's, you know, it's tough for people. I think you're either in the business or you're not. And if you're not, you, you fully don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Just like I don't understand being a teacher. I don't understand being a farmer. I don't. That's not my, my, my world. Just so. so you feel a little more comfortable that, you know, in my other job, I run a sales department for Eagle Broadband and have for a long time. Mm -hmm. I've never met anybody that hasn't been in sales mm -hmm. that has the slightest clue what it really is or right. what it's like. Right. So I don't think this is unique. I think right. there are some things that are so right. different from everybody else's normal human experience mm -hmm. that they stand apart. And I, sales is one of them, but that's a small example compared to law enforcement. I right. do believe it really is. It's unique. So you mentioned conceals carry great opportunity. So Bobby Campanelli and I, mm -hmm. uh, Bobby's also been a reserve for just one year less than me. Um, we have been, um, uh, instructors authorized by the KSAG's office for all the years that concealed carry has been a law in Kansas. We've right. been on, we were in the first instructor class. I guess we've taught four or 500 people in courses out at the Dickinson County Sheriff range under your authority. And we did so because we wanted people to have a good class. 
Right. It's supposed to be eight hours of instruction and they get eight hours of instruction from right. us. Bobby teaches the gun side, I teach the legal side. Right. Despite my efforts to make him switch, you know, five <laughs> years in and he just won't give it up. Right. So, but anyway, one day maybe I'll get the gun side and he'll have to do the legal side. But in one class, we've had, we've had the Dickinson County attorney, Keith, Right. In my class, in right. our class, we we've we have had law enforcement in our class. We had General Peterson from Fort Riley in our class. Mm -hmm. We've had uh, 25 soldiers in our right. class. We've had a wide range of people. And about two or three years ago at the lunch break, we, I did the legal first in the morning. A person came up to me and said, I thought we would hear from you today all the reasons that we should go get a concealed carry license. He says, and after hearing you this morning, I'm thinking maybe I don't want one. Right. I said, then I've done my job. Absolutely. I've made you aware of the responsibility. My leading line for almost everything in that class is, we start with the Constitution and the preamble to the Declaration of Independence. Right. We start there because I tell them, if you don't understand this, how can you possibly understand the implications of this long Kansas statute? Right. Right. So we start there. But I also say that I have been the beneficiary of more freedom than most people my age you have ever met because of where I was raised and the parents I had. Mm -hmm. But also, that also means I had that freedom because I also got the same dose of responsibility for it. Right. I've always had that balance right. in my training, mm -hmm. my upbringing, who I am. Mm -hmm. Because without responsibility, there is no freedom. We're seeing that imbalance today, both yeah. sides, you know, law mm -hmm. enforcement, certain accountability, certain re levels of authority. But if you don't have the accountability for your actions, defund the police shows up. Right. Yeah. Again, uh, you know, I'll go back to, and, and let me say too, clearly, I mean, let's first of all, I think, address the elephant in the room, and that is white male, mm -hmm. living in predominantly white community, yep. born and raised. Mm -hmm. So certainly I am not a guru, uh, you know, in that arena. Mm -hmm. We're kind of creatures of our own environment sometimes. As everybody is. As everybody is. But we, we got this wrong. I, I mean, mm -hmm. we, let's, let's just call it, call it what it is. Okay. We got this wrong. And you can, you can take the word we and, and spin that into anything you want. Mm -hmm. Law enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, the black community, the white community, mm -hmm. uh, legislation, mm -hmm. uh, whoever you want to, mm -hmm. whoever you want to point that, the president, uh, whoever you want to point that at, you know, I think you can point at, but at the end of the day, I think it comes back to we. Yeah, I would agree. We. We. Got this wrong. Yeah, All of us. That's well said, Gary. Got this wrong. That's well said. And until we quit trying to single out who's at fault, I feel as though we're going to continue to chase our tail. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a, this is a we issue, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of your social status, regardless of your position that you hold, um, regardless of where you reside, uh, I think, I think that's where we have to be careful and where we have to pay attention is understanding it's a we right. thing yeah. as a as a country. Um, secondly, I think we have to identify and and although law enforcement is starting to try and get a little bit better. But we have to figure out as a profession, and I do not have the answer, but I think we have to figure out as a profession of how we end up at this, this moment, mm -hmm. this place. 
uh, you and I talked um, before, you know, before the camera went on mm -hmm. about the lack of emotion um, on the officers, on the officer's face. And right. if you know, you know anything about people, you, you can kind of see that, mm -hmm. that it's not what you saw as much as what you didn't, didn't. see, yeah. uh, you know, where clearly the body language, the lack of emotion, I think shows us where this that person that was. person mm -hmm. was. Right. And as an as an industry, as a community, as a as a business, we have to figure out how officers are ending up at that place. Now I got a ton of thoughts on that. Okay. I have <laughs> but, water. Um, but <laughs> but, uh, but Dave's that, got a lot of tape. You know, that's a whole nother spin-off. But what law enforcement has finally started to do, I don't think we're seeing the full cycle of it yet, but what they're starting to do is they're starting to address health and well-being within the business. My feeling is, through hundreds of hours of trainings, hundreds of that, probably thousands of hours of self-evaluation through my own mistakes, through my own stumbles, it goes kind of back to what I said. Once you, once you kind of get away from faith or you get away from self-reflection, self-evaluation, mm -hmm. And you put, you put to work a specific skill set that you get when you come into the business. You go to the academy and they teach you things and they, they teach you this and they teach you this and they drive these points home about how to be an effective law enforcement officer. But we're missing out on how to be an effective person mm -hmm. because they don't always, they don't always jive. Um, you, you are given a skill set that is, that is to provide you with tools to keep you safe, to keep you protected, to help you protect other people. But on the back side, we're not taking care of ourselves. When you fail to take care of yourself, you go to this other place. Okay. You get further away from God. Mm -hmm. um, you get... You get further away from humanity You get further itself. away from humanity. You get further away from emotion and compassion and when you get there man I, I I don't know I don't know I don't know that place yeah I've experienced pieces of that and right. have had to draw myself right. back and say yeah. you know I don't like where I don't like where I'm headed God bless my wife yeah for two you know for, I noticed the for, few knots on your head yeah there. Thank for, you. Thank for you. stick you know for sticking out some of those <laughs> tough times and and having the backbone and the ability yeah. to say uh, you're not the same guy, yeah. and we got to figure it out. Um, it, it's scary. So you know, I've had this conversation in just the two of us, but I've also had it with every law enforcement person that I've known for a long time. And as I t told you years ago, you know, my deep connection to law enforcement started when I was about 19. So I made my first citizen's helpful arrest at 19 with a pistol mm -hmm. in a deadly force situation because that's what happened to me, right? right. Mm -hmm. But anyway, here's the deal. I t I've told you and other people, I have never met a long time serving law enforcement person who is not more negative than they would have been in some other career. And many law enforcement people who have lived what you had just described to us mm -hmm. don't come out the same person. Right. They're just, everybody is lying to them all day long, and right. so therefore they believe what? Everybody's likely a liar, yep. you know? So uh, all of that negativity that gets poured into the job of law enforcement, we are people, you're a person, that comes out in your sweat. Absolutely. It comes out in your life. Right but we still need law enforcement. Right. So how do you deal with that? Well, the military's had the same problem as long as there's been a military right. of any kind sure. in the world. Sure. So do you know any place in America that really treats their warriors 
as good as they should when they come home. Right. People think Vietnam. No, World War II. Right. My Uncle Tom came home with what in those days was called shell shock after in the Po Valley, after three and a half years of constant combat, left Dove Creek, Colorado, 1,900 people in the whole county. The town's never had more than 900 in it. It's one of the largest geographic counties in Colorado. That defines rural. Went from there, Fort Leonard Wood, California, got on a boat, landed in North Africa. North Africa, Horn of Italy, up Italy, Po Valley, and was fighting into Germany when Hitler gave it up. Mm -hmm. my, him and my Clayton, 10 months apart, were in the same unit in the same tent. Brothers. Both were engineers, ran dozers. The Po Valley is the most mined place on the earth other than the border between the two Koreas. So their job was to clear all the dead things out of the road. Dead tanks, dead trucks, dead people, dead horses, dead right. everything was dead. Right. In order to get off the mountains, through the mountains, two D4 cats are tiny little things. You should go to Fort Leonard Wood and see what one looks like. They're just about the size of our mower right. with a blade on the front of it, right? Two D4s working side by side to clear the road for the armor to get in. So Uncle Clayton and Uncle Tom are the front people where the snipers are still shooting at. Uncle Tom's partner, Uncle Clayton was off shift. Uncle Tom and his partner working two dozers side by side. Partner backed up on a mine. Whoosh. Didn't hurt Uncle Tom, but it hurt him here. Sure. He had had all he could take. Sure. And he came home that way. And no treatment, no assistance until his dying day. Mm -hmm. Never had a normal life. Right. We've never treated our warriors well. Right. Still don't today. Go to right. VA hospital, look around. Mm -hmm. It's because if we as humans, we really aren't supposed to be doing these things to each other, Cain and Abel. Right. We're really not supposed to be doing these things to each other. Right. But we do, and the cost is heavy. Very heavy. Heavy. Yeah. Law enforcement is not immune. I guess that's what I'm saying. That's right. a story to try to put military law enforcement and a life story with a real person's name in it to those people behind the lens. Right. These things we do in law enforcement, th many of the stuff is not normal. Correct. So we, us reserves, we didn't do a lot of real police work really over the last 20 years some significant things in the middle back when liability wasn't quite the high as it is today. Right. But still, <clears throat> we only went out when you needed us or Kurt needed us. The rest of the time was really ride along just in case, right. you know, that sort of a thing. But um, I was working with one of your deputies maybe six, eight years ago, something like that, and, and just to ride along I had time. So I called in, somebody picked me up. We were serving papers, just going around delivering all the stuff, legal papers that people have to get from a law enforcement officer, right? right? No active warrants, just papers. Went to a house in Enterprise. Walked in, opened the door, 25-year-old man, something there, opened the door. Loud TV coming on. Deputy goes in, I come in behind him. He curves to the right. A uh, 25-year-old man, I would guess his mother or his wife, girlfriend's mother, but two generations of adults were talking to the deputy, getting the papers. There was a little baby, yay high, which, table high, Dave, table high, maybe littler, standing in front of me with a diaper on. Mm -hmm. There was about a two-and-a-half-year-old sitting on a couch right over there. So. I did my job. I got off at an angle where I could watch both adults, the deputy, and keep the kids in my periphery. And, and all this while, this TV was didn't really enter my consciousness. Right. I first saw the little baby, like, the dirty, mm -hmm. dirty little thing, barefoot. And the little boy on the couch said something, and I turned to smile at him. My piece of law enforcement humanity smile at him mm -hmm. and on TV 
was a porno movie at 105 decibels. Right. And he's just sitting there like this. Right. It's what was on TV. Yeah. And all of the things went through my mind right. and my emotions. Right. How can this be? Right. What am I supposed to do? Right. They didn't cover this in how to be a reserve deputy <laughs> manual, right? Yeah. You don't go turn over the TV, right? Right. So I said, this is what I can do. So I picked up that little baby, and when I did, the bottom of his feet was as black as your uniform. Mm -hmm. And I held him, and I turned to that little boy, and I said, would you like to hear a story? And he, yeah. So I started telling one of my famous stories, you know, that my kids know. Uh, just to distract them. Right. We were in there a couple, three minutes after that. Mm -hmm. But I thought maybe I put three minutes of humanity in. Right. What are you supposed to do? Right. What if, was, was there probable, you know, endangering a, a, a juvenile? Right. Well, I thought so. Right. But did I have an arrestable offense? Right. Probably not. Right. Free country, man. Right. But was that family going where it needed to be? No, it was a disaster waiting right. to happen. Probably has happened since then. Right. Right? But what could I do? Right. Well, I did what I could. That was emotionally traumatizing to me. Absolutely. And I think, I think that's one of the things. Here's how I have kind of broken it down, you know, for myself as I try to self self-correct, self-reflect, um, because, you know, 27 years of law enforcement, it changes you. Mm -hmm. It's no secret. Uh, military, same way. I, I, firefighters, EMTs, paramedics, right. um, law enforcement, dispatchers, corrections officers, in, military, all of these things. I mean, I think it's safe to say that everyone whether in those industries or not, you're not the same person you were 30 years ago. I mean, you, you're just not. But I think in those arenas, it's magnified. And we all know that we will not come out, you know, on the, on the end the same as we were when we started. But I think the key is, is to figure out when you do come out, what is it that you want to have left? So the thing that I've tried to really address with the different trainings that we've been bringing in here um, and address with my people is if you are not well, you cannot do well mm -hmm. and, and if we really break that down if you're broken down inside how can you go out and do well for another it be good at home before you're good in the community because yeah. otherwise it doesn't it, it just doesn't jive so gareth what i predicted what happened has just mm -hmm. happened. We're out of time in our 25. Mm -hmm. We're going to shoot around two of this. Okay. So don't run off and take our microphone with you. Unless right. you're going to run off. But right. I don't think you are. So let's, we're going to round two. We're going to get down in from that point down into our little beautiful place of America here. And we want to we want to continue this conversation. So, folks, Absolutely. I'm Dennis Suisse. I work for Eagle Broadband. We appreciate you watching Our Town with us today with Sheriff Hoffman. We're filming round two for you as a follow-up to this conversation. So stay tuned. Have a great day. <laughs>